Firstly, I want to introduce for you myself and our place. My name is Hossam. I'm a local guide and also young artist in Academy of Art. And uh, this place is called Egypt the Papyrus Institute and also under the control of Egyptian government. In ancient time, each letter has a meaning. Uh, for example, Hossam, H, answer, O, original, S, smart, S, strong, M, not married. <laughs> okay. Firstly, this is a papyrus plant. This plant it was holy and sacred plant in ancient time. Why? Because the reason. First reason, as you see, the flower looks like sun rays, symbol of our moon, ra, symbol of protection in ancient time. Second reason, as you see, the second part of the plant looks like the pyramid ship, symbol of eternity. For that, it was holy plant in ancient time. Now, we have a protection and the good luck and the happiness also, yeah? And me, more hair. More hair? Yeah. <laughs> Now this is the time for I show you how mix the paper. For mix the paper, cut it which size we need it, according to size we need it. For example, mm -hmm. the small part like this idea. And after that, remove the green part. The green part is very stronger. For that, the ancient Egyptian used it for making shoes, baskets, sandals, ropes. Now you are strong, you have good muscles. Yeah. yeah. If you cut this one by pulling it, I give you something gift. I surprise you. If you no cut it, I take it one hug. Deal or no deal? Deal. 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 Okay. Give me the camera and they try you. Pull. Yeah. Okay. okay. Pull. Yeah. A little part. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Stronger. Where is your muscles? It's done. Three, two, one. I am winner now. <laughs> the inner part, the inner part for making is a paper. As you mm -hmm. see, it is broken, not flexible. Why? Because it has amount of water. To get out the water, first we use the hammer. And after that, roll it by hand roll. Hand roll, especially for what? For making a pizza bread. Mm -hmm. Here in Egypt, for hitting a husband and the boyfriend. <laughs> I think in all the world. Yes? Oh, yes. yes. Okay. As you see now the water out, more water out, more flexible and more stronger. Now become more stronger, more flexible as you see. Also it has amount of sugar. To get out the sugar, we leave it on water six days. Why? Because the sugar after that become natural glue, help the strips stuck together after that. Because the paper no any chemical inside. What about the color of the paper? Two kind, one white and one brown. White, leave it on water six days. Brown, leave it on water 12 days. As you see, the white and the brown in front of your eyes. Continue all like this idea, horizontal way, vertical way, overlap, and mm -hmm. they cover it another piece. And they put it under the hand press six days again. In oh, ancient wow. time, no hand press, no machine. You can guess what used in ancient time? Like you can guess what? stones? Stones, perfect. Or two fat women sitting six <laughs> days. Egyptian, that's also by the way. Six days here, plus six days here. 12 days white paper, but 12 plus 6, 18 days of brown paper. Now, 3, 2, 1, this is here, the first paper. And also the original paper. Why is wow. the original paper? Because unfortunately, some places here in Egypt set false papyrus, not original paper. Fake papyrus from banana leaves, like Khan wow. Khalili Market and Sharm, Luxor. As one, besides the Egyptian Museum, besides the pyramid area, no real paper, fake papyrus from banana leaves, original paper from papyrus plant. And the papyrus plant under the control of Egyptian government. And this place is called Egypt, the Papyrus Institute, like Adidas. If you go for Adidas and they get culture from Adidas, leave it with you about five years. If you get from the street, one month, two months, and after that, damage and broken. Now, how we know the original and the fake papyrus is very important, you know. Here is the point for the quality, as you see under the line. Two yeah. direction, horizontal way, vertical way, like I make it before. Make it the paper more strong and more flexible. Second point, you can see under the light, we have brown dots color. Brown dots color is called the fiber. The yeah. fiber gives the paper ability for absorbing any kind of the color. But fake papyrus, no two direction, no fibers inside. Now Ooh. smell it the paper, please, my queen. Smell. Smell. You smell anything? No. COVID 19? <laughs> No, it means you know any chemical inside the paper, natural paper. 
After making is a paper, we send is a paper in the Academy of Art for painted by professional and student art. Painted something copy for Regional One Egyptian Museum. Like the final judgment day, the wing of the heart. It's a very mm-hmm. important story we have here. Also, we have the first calendar in all the world. Just a minute. This one is called the first calendar in all the world. You see this one before or not? I have not. Oh, Unfortunately, wow. the original one not here now in Louvre Museum in Paris, Alibaba. Yeah. But we have another one in the Dandara Temple in Luxor, hand the graphic in the wall and the seal up. But also, this is a, it's called first calendar in all the world or map of the star. Imagine with me the big circle, like Earth, small circle, and the blue color, and all the mm-hmm. signs inside, like sky. Around the year 12 a person, 12 a month, four tables. For Horus, represent for direction, east to west. For North, represent for season. Summer, winter, 24 hours, 24 hours. And my touch for it, I can use now as a clock. I'll pick up small hole here and write 12 and the 6 and 3 and the 9. And then I will make it the clock, I put it the machine in the back and the arms of the clock and use this one as a clock. I hope you enjoy it also with this story. Ooh. Okay. Now the time for the cartouche. I think you know the cartouche. Yeah. yeah. And you understand the cartouche. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the meaning also of the H letter you'll know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm here for professional. I know. But what's your zodiac, your sign? I'm a Taurus. I like it. <laughs> Very romantic woman too much. But sometimes a fire. But this is healthy. Very yeah. fire. Very spicy. <laughs> I like it. It's a spicy woman. Okay. Now, this is the time for I show you the magic room, the best section we have here. Please follow me. I want to use the paradise one, the best one we have here. This is especially for you. Apples, protection, hospitality, mm-hmm. all thing. I'll make it you happy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is a paradise one. Just for a minute. Hey, this is really pretty. Why is this one is called the paradise one? All symbols in ancient time inside the paradise. Mm-hmm. It started here with Horus, symbol of protection in ancient time. Isis. Simple of love and happiness. Mind, motherhood, justice, fertility, peace. Hathor, good luck and health. Nefertari, the most beautiful queen in ancient time. Mm-hmm. Ask it, more love, more happiness, more protection, more peace, more fertility, more good luck. This one, if you put it in your home, make it your home like a paradise. This is a nice one and a nice piece. And if you get something like this, I write the name of you here in Arabic and here in English, in the middle, in your horrific alphabet, inside the paradise. This is the best one for you. Tab, where is the magic firstly, yeah? <laughs> Look at for this one now. Look at, I show the magic now. Three, two, one. Oh, wow. You got it what I say? Yeah. It changed, it make it the panorama of Egypt, the three great pyramids, symbol wow. of eternity, and the golden mask of Tutankhamun and the Nefertiti. In the middle, the scarab, sign of good luck, and two wings and the sun, symbol of protection. Give the hand for the king, and give the hand for the queen, for protection and the good luck. This one, the best one, if you want to get for yourself. Wow, now this is gorgeous. And then, oh wow, that's awesome. That's so cool. I can see like the lines yes, on it. Yes, this is, yeah. yeah. This is magic click one. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, so we're in um, Egypt Papyrus Institute and um, we just went over how to create um, an original papyrus scroll that they use in ancient Egypt. And um, we just saw a a piece so that that's like this piece also yeah guys we are at the cairo museum and um i'm about to show y'all what to do the national museum of egyptian civilization yes you guys this is the entrance to the National Museum. It's gorgeous, man. Like, wow. It looks massive. Oh, 
of uh, military personnel here. There are actually a lot of places. They're like everywhere. And then there's old Cairo in the distance there. Alright guys, so we are in the museum in Cairo. So I think it's interesting how the, the museum goes in chronological order. So it starts from the oldest Paleolithic age and you go all around to the modern era, which ends over here in this uh, this area. I'm going to start on this side. So this is uh, represents a cave, a pre-dynastic era cave from the Paleolithic age, and um, is really representative of what housing looked like um, thousands of years ago when. We were still living in caves and living off of the land. You see that there's like a straw roof to protect against rain, snow, um, the elements, and um, some trees and branches that help lift the roof and keep it in place. And we have something where it's like carved out and uh, we have like a nice dwelling here. It looks like they're, you know, making a fire there to cook some food. So that's really interesting. And over here, we have something really interesting. This is the first mummy ever, the first skeleton ever found. And this is a young man, and he lived 35,000 years ago, guys. Like literally 35,000 years ago. So, and uh, these are the stone tools that were commonplace uh, used in the Stone Age. So we've got a few, a few different types of stone tools that are here. <laughs> and that looks like knives. So typically, like these knives and. Um, these tools, they were made of stone as well as animal bones. So the animals they would kill, um, they would try to use every piece of the animal. So they would eat the meat, um, use the fur for clothing to keep warm, and then use the bones to create tools. So that's also really like, really interesting. Awesome. And here we have a glimpse of what life looked like during that time period. Really just like, you know, getting a, a feel of how they lived, um, how they worked together. Really totally different from what it is nowadays. I feel like back then, you know, you had to be more of a team with your peers, with your, you know, the people in your village that you lived with and ate with and broke bread with. Nowadays, it's really individualized and it's like every man for themselves. Can we go back to being a team again? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, look, the, this looks like the Sphinx, right? So this is the royal insignia. Ah. Symbols of authority. That's really cool. Mm. So this is the queen in the form of a sphinx. So this is one of the oldest statues made in the form of the sphinx for one of the ancient Egyptian queens. Um, it is attributed to Queen Hetfiers, the daughter of King Khufu. And it's a rare statue of the queen and it indicates, you know, her assumption of the throne. Like, you know, she was assumed to rise, to take her seat on the throne. And it's a really interesting time because ancient Egypt is one of the few places in um, 
one of the few places in our modern history where females were allowed and very much ruled their kingdom and they were very good at it, if I might add. Well, so these are some stone tools, look. Doesn't that look like a protractor? <laughs> 90 degrees. Look at that. It's, listen, not much has changed, man. Not much has changed. And these tools are from thousands of years ago. Literally thousands of years ago. And we still use it to this day. Look at the the Egyptian hieroglyphs and how they would measure, like their numbers and how they would measure it. Not much has changed, man. Not much has changed. They have some like models. It's possible. Here we have the ancient Egyptian god. <laughs> Um, who he was really hailed as a god, and that is so amazing. Like seriously, um, the ancient Egyptians sacrificed the ibis bird and associated it with the moon, possibly because of the similarity of its curved beak with the lunar crescent. The exquisite abilities of the ibis in locating earthworms had gained it a reputation of knowing hidden secrets. It was thus appropriately seen as a symbol of Thoth, the lord of wisdom and knowledge, the god of time and the moon. He was also the patron of scribes and the creator of letters and words. So whenever you see like a depiction of Thoth, he always has the head of the ibis bird. And it's really symbolic because uh, the ibis bird was known to be a really smart bird. Um, they had really uh, had really pinpoint accuracy when they were hunting, and they became famous for that. Really cool. So here we can see the actual coffins of one of the princesses. Um, of ancient Egypt and you can see how beautifully decorated it is I mean like it looks amazing look at all that intricate detail that's on the top on the sides and literally all around all around this uh, this coffin and there's another one in there too so this is probably um, uh, a, a box. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it's like the proper name of it is, but um, boxes that held treasures, uh, could be food, um, just like, you know, things that was assumed would be needed in the afterlife in order for the princess to maintain quality of life in, uh, in heaven. Oh, wow. I, it's just like though it's so intricately decorated I mean like it's just amazing okay. so here we have the Sphinx of King I'm I'm men I'm hot oh okay <laughs> This is so cool. So the Sphinx statues expressed the living king sitting on the throne as the image of the god Shu, who controls the boundaries of the universe and was always depicted in the form of a crouching lion. This statue was one of the statues of Amenemhat III which flanked the processional route in front of his great temple at Hawara. And this is from uh, 1985 BC to 1795 BC. And that was the rain and also during the time in which this was erected. So it seems like there are a lot of royals that had 
themselves depicted as the Sphinx, which really kind of goes back to what I mentioned when we were at the pyramids, when we were looking at the Sphinx, um, that the Sphinx has actually been there prior to the formation of, a, of ancient Egypt, especially the formation of a unified ancient Egypt. So we are and in what's called the Pharaonic village, where we get a chance to see like how the pharaohs live their lives on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're actually on the Nile and our tour is actually starting. So it's gonna be fun. The most famous of Ramesses II's monuments is the Great Temple at Abu Simbel in Nubia, south of Aswan. This magnificent building with its famous colossal statues of the king was cut entirely in the rock, along with the nearby temple of Ramesses' favorite queen, Nefertari. The two temples were rescued from the waters of Lake Nasser when the Aswan High Dam was being built in the 1960s. Okay. This scene shows the discovery of the child Moses, whose mother had put him in a basket and floated it on the Nile to prevent him from being killed by Pharaoh's soldiers. The child was discovered by a member of Pharaoh's family and was brought up in the royal palace. Eventually, he became a prophet who led his own people, the Hebrews, out of Egypt. Now life in ancient Egypt comes alive with scenes of agriculture and industry. The nobleman and his wife are enjoying the fresh air in their garden pavilion. They are playing a game called Senet, a game for two players, a form of which is still played in Egypt today. Ploughing is the first operation in preparing the land for cultivation. And here we see the ploughman with his team and the simple wooden plough. After ploughing, the heavy clogs of soil are broken up with a hoe and then furrows are made with the broad-bladed mattock. The sower scatters the seed from a small bag or basket and sheep follow the sower to press the seed into the tough soil with their feet. Beside the houses in the background are pigeon towers. The Egyptians kept pigeons for food and they were used for carrying messages, especially for the army. The fields are irrigated by means of the shadouf, which works like a balance, with a bucket at one end of a long pole and a heavy stone as a counterweight. Shadoufs are still sometimes used in the Egyptian countryside. When the grain is harvested, the sheaves are carried to the threshing floor in a net bag hung on a long pole. When a thick layer of grain has been spread on the circular floor, oxen or cows are driven round to break up the ears of grain with their heavy feet. The Egyptians are also famous for mummifying their dead. Mummification is basically dehydration, and to speed up this process, the internal organs of the body were removed and preserved separately. The body was dried out by being covered with natron salt, a form of soda found in the deserts of Egypt. The body was then cleaned and embalmed and wrapped in several layers of linen bandages. Amulets were put between the bandages to protect the mummy from harm. The whole process took 70 days. This scene shows the different stages in decorating a stone wall. First of all, the surface is leveled, then smoothed and polished with a piece of hard stone. Grid lines are marked in red on the prepared surface to ensure accurate enlargements of the original drawings. The artist copies the outline onto the wall, working from the sketch made by the chief artist on a small slab of stone or a piece of papyrus. Then the sculptor carves the design in relief with his mallet and chisel. Finally, the details would be painted in color to make the picture look as realistic as possible.
statues were partially carved in the quarry where the stone for them was cut. First of all, the block of stone is separated from the rock base by hammering wooden wedges into holes cut in the rock. The wedges are soaked with water, and as the wood expands, the block breaks away. After the stone has been smoothed and polished, the profile of the work is outlined on one side, and then the sculptor carves out the figure, rounding it off first on the front, and then on the back. Wow! Oh, you guys! Take a look at this view! Egyptian. Too Egyptian. You can't tell me not. Look, I got my cartouche. Ah, cartouche. I got yes. my cartouche. Nice cartouche. Yeah. <laughs> my face Egyptian. Yeah, see? Yes. <laughs> I got my cartouche. Man, this, this is home now. What are you talking about. <laughs> oh my god. What's up, what's up guys? So today is my birthday and I am so excited. It's gonna be so much fun. Um, we are heading to Sukna. So we're going to be like in the pyramid. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Good pyramids in the background. Okay. We're going to Sukna. So we're going to be in the Red Sea today. Excuse me, guys. It's early. It's like 8 a.m. And I'm exhausted. I went to bed at maybe like um, 4 in the morning last night. Um, but I went to, <laughs> went to a club last night and very interesting experience very interesting experience to say the least but um ready to head to the red sea today i've got my cartouche i also have like the bracelet as well as uh the ring i'm not i don't have it on right now but i'll show you guys at a different time um and yeah i have my things and we're ready and i love you guys <laughs> On the way to Sogna, it's the Red Sea. Mountains behind us. We're actually in Sogna, yes.
so we are in Sukna and we're actually no longer in Cairo, no longer in Egypt, we are in Sukna. Today is my birthday and I'm very excited to be here. Um, this is, let's see. And we're about to enjoy some time on the beach, get to soak and just relax. And I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> so I'll just be here for the day because you know tomorrow we're going to tomorrow we'll be going to Luxor. So we'll be able to see like the Valley of the Kings and um like the famous grand temples, like the temple of King Ramses and King Tutmos. Um sorry. Pharaoh Ramses and Pharaoh Tutmos and um, yeah it's gonna be awesome I might do a boat I might not I haven't really decided yet and um, yeah if I do obviously you know I'll film so you guys will be first <laughs> Yeah, um, it's really beautiful here actually, like, it's gorgeous, like the resort is pretty, the sand is warm, my feet are ashy so I'm not going to show those, and yeah I have my, um, my Alexander Wang dress, so we're looking cute, you know, you know, alright guys, so I'll see you soon. Primordial waters, waters that hold ancient history, ancient secrets. Hmm. From before the time of Christ, from before the time of the first Pharaoh. <laughs> Magical. Thank you for your energy. Gorgeous. Mm. Honestly, I can say that like I'm really tired. I'm really tired. It was a long drive back, um, but I'm feeling good. And um, I think I'm just gonna really chill today. Like today is actually my birthday. And it's so funny because I feel like most of the time it's like on my birthday, like I wanna be out, I wanna do this, I wanna do that, I wanna do so much. Right now, I just wanna mess. Like, I just wanna chill out. I wanna chill out and just, just vibe. And I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm so grateful, I'm so happy. Um, I feel like I couldn't have asked for more um, in a birthday. Like, we went to the Red Sea, I sang to the Red Sea, and it was just beautiful. It was beautiful, and it was um, just, a, just a chill day, like chilling at the beach, um, having like a cocktail, a drink, and just like relaxing. I just, I really needed that, and um, yeah, I'm just happy. The Red Sea, 
felt like home. It, it really felt felt like home. It felt like it felt like I've been here before. Like like I've done this before. Like you know what I'm saying. And, um, it was cleansing. Cleansing. It was cleansing. It made me really sit back and reflect. And it felt like I went up on a level. You know what I'm saying? Like just intuition, knowledge, um, clarity. A lot of clarity. And yeah. This has been my best birthday ever. Really. And I'm glad that even though like I'm glad that I, I was able to do this for myself. And um I'm about to head upstairs. Apparently the hotel put together a little something for me. I'm so grateful. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so let's find out what it is. <laughs> Guys, they put together a little decoration for me. <laughs> to say happy birthday.